and welcome to Thursday's daily vlog. Big day today. The light is at the end of the tunnel on the old hog here. We must admit we've got it up on the gear. We've super detailed the gear, put all the brake lines, the hoses, the lights, all the various bits and pieces on. The gun, which I have to say, it's beautiful. Don't get me wrong, this is the actual gun. Who makes it? Uh, Master. Um, it, it's lovely, it's a delight, the turd, the brass, but God is it fiddly. I must admit, we do it on the, the build video you'll get in a couple of days time. And I put it all together and I think, oh that's great, and I go to show the camera, it falls apart in hand. Anyway, it's on the front there now, uh, and I must admit, it's not many model kits, you have to turn up with a, I don't know what it is, 10mm drill bit and drill out that to get it to fit in. But it is in there now, but boy is it looking the part. And I must admit, the gear on this... I know it's trumpeter and it's not the best gear in the world and all the rest of it, but boy does it work. It works really, really well. Now we've got the brake lines in, we've done a little bit of weathering around on it all and everything else like that and it is now really coming to life. She's really starting to come now, uh, get all the bits in now, the lights are all on. Uh, but to be honest, I've literally just done the pylons for it, they're sorted out uh, and done so we're now getting ready for the weapons fit. And now she's on a gear and off the table so to speak and everything else, I can actually work on the bay. So we've got to do the battery bay, we're going to get that one sorted maybe today if I've got time. And then we've got to do the electronics bay here on the other side. We're going to get this one in, get that fitted, get that decked out. At the moment, I'm trying not to do it too much because I tend to be holding it there. And you know what's going on. I'm going to put my finger in it and put the wires through. But the cockpit as well, we're getting ready to unmask. A little bit of a thing. I'm not sure. Honestly, I am going to overcoat it. I am probably going to leave it like this. I'm loving the, the sort of the camo pattern, the way it's working with the, the colours. And I know on camera it certainly looks like it's one colour. It looks like it's just grey. I've been doing the editing and everything else and you know I've got that quite expensive monitor. It looks better on that but upstairs on the other computer it looks like it's one tone grey. It's not. You can actually see as I sit here, real distinctive cut lining in there. Um, it's just because of the, this shadowing we're talking about and the shading, because it has this sort of satin effect over the actual, uh, the wings and that, it sort of blends the colors together. And I think that's why the post shading on camera pops out as well. Um, certainly I haven't had this effect before where it's a different on camera to it is in reality. And normally what I tend to do is, I tend to sort of strike a balance between the two. Sometimes it looks overdone here so it looks better on camera. Uh, so you guys can see more what I'm doing. But actually I'm holding off now and I'm not going to touch it because in my I'm looking at this and I can see that dark gold, um, dark ghost grey there, light gold grey. There's a distinct line. I can see one here. But on camera I know you're not seeing it. And it is just one of those things where, you know, from a, a, a bird's eye point of view of looking down on this thing, it looks fine. But unfortunately you cut across the angle because of the shininess that it's got, you don't really see it. But anyway, I've had a great day on this one, really pushed on quite heavily, and so I'm recording this at five o'clock, I'm very late, so the chances are it's all gonna be late going up there. But now with the pylons on, the gears on, and the doors are all on, and everything else like that, I'm in a really nice position. What I'd like to do tomorrow, if I get the time, is to really finish off the main aircraft. We've still got to do weapons fit, we've still got to sort the cockpit out, I've still got to do the ejector seat for it. There's lots of little bits and pieces to do on this one, but generally, it is definitely coming together. And I tweeted it out this afternoon, saying the light is at the end of the tunnel. That's how I feel with this one, but I'm going to be so disappointed when it's done. And I'm going to be starting with a blank sheet on the next build, and it's going to be like, ah. Because I've actually really, really enjoyed doing it. It's been a little bit of a challenge, not over challenge. still think it's a great kit, but it's just been nice to have that little thing that's going to test you and stretch you and everything else like that. One thing I do have to thank um, everybody. It looks like you're all Tiger experts because uh, the review of this yesterday, I don't think we've ever had as many people contact me about it uh, and all the rest of it. Um, and you were telling me all your correct information about this particular kit. As I say, I am no means an uh, armor guy. Um, aircraft, you ask me about A10s, I can talk to you all day about those. Uh, and I can tell you everything that's wrong with that kit all over it instantly. But when it comes to armor, I haven't got a clue. Luckily, you guys all have. So thank you to everybody who sent me information saying you need to put Zimmer on it because without Zimmer, it's not an active one. There was three that were done without Zimmer and they were all the post production or the prototype version ones. Um, that's where Bobbington got theirs because apparently they dragged it off of a proving ground uh, in Germany uh, after the war and brought it back. And if we did want to do it like it, apparently the armor on the top turret on the front and on the rear and stuff like that is thinner than what was the production version as well. And there's lots of little differences all over that particular one if we wanted to go down that route. But if we did want to do the Porsche turret, we're gonna to have to do the Zimmerit. 
So it looks like we're going to be doing Zimrit, which is something I've never done before in my entire life. So it'll be interesting to have a go at it. I've got my own sort of way of doing it. I know loads of you are going to start sending me links on this is how you should do it. But trust me, I like to work these things out myself. So I'm probably going to end up just milliputting putting the entire thing or an epoxy resin right over it and then stippling the hell out of it. So, you know, it should be a lot of fun. I'm really looking forward to doing it. But as I said before, it's not going to be really about doing Zimrit. It's all going to be about the interior because no one's going to take any notice. Trust me when I finish with it what the outside looks like they're all going to be looking inside because that's where 99% of the work is going to go on this particular one but it should be a lot of fun I know loads of you are excited me for to doing it um, and a lot of you agree with me with Takim as well saying how they sort of come left field out of nowhere and producing good quality kits I've had a couple of people mention to me that they put them on a par with anything from Wingnut Wings and as you know if anybody asks me what the best kit manufacturer out there is I'll say Wingnut Wings because they are just unbelievably good at it um, but yeah so thank you to everybody though because I said some of you have sent me some detailed information on it uh, some of you have sent me some of the actual technical schematics from it and everything else like that but I said it's going to be a little bit off yet I'm going to do what I call a mojo builder in between my builds before we get stuck into this one I'm going to do something quite small short and sweet probably maybe a week two weeks work uh, and I'm going to do the A4 for that one and then we're going to pile into this one and then right off the back of this I'm going to do the ME262 the Revel one I've got a few bits and pieces for that that night fighter version so we're going to do that one as well so we've got a couple of little aircraft things coming up but we've definitely got this as our big armor build as we make our way through so really looking forward to that one so that is about it for today so up on the site now you've actually got part 11 now part 11 just talks about the mask of putting on this front area and going through the motions of it so that is up with you right now i had every intention i'll be honest with you putting steve's post shading video up but to be honest, it's still going up as we speak and it's going to take a little bit of time and there's a bit of a queue because this is uploading at the moment. Then I've got to put this vlog up and then we've got to put the other one up as well after it. So there's loads of stuff. So what I'm going to do is put Steve's up overnight and you can watch Steve's tomorrow in amongst all the other bits and pieces as you join us tomorrow for our Friday catch up show. So on that, we'll be talking about everything we've done during the week, see what Hans has been up to, what Steve has been up to, obviously what I've been doing, and then we can have a look at your great work in the gallery. So that's it for today. Go off and have a look at this one and then I'm going to carry on with it and hopefully we'll be in a position tomorrow where we've even got it unmasked and the cockpit done. So until tomorrow everybody, happy modelling. Take care.